Hey there, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey, and in this video I want to talk a little bit about um, penalty kill forecheck. So penalty kill forecheck, there are a number of different ways of doing it. Um, the one that I've really liked in the past is kind of the uh, the T forecheck, and uh, so I'm going to show you the T forecheck, and then I'm going to show you uh, an even beefed up version of that that I like even better. So, uh, but basically the the concepts are still the same. There's just a you know a slightly uh, different way of doing it that I, I think I like a little bit better than the conventional T. So let's pull up the rink and I'll show you kind of what the T looks like. Um, this is actually a similar breakout to uh, our power play swing breakout that we diagrammed out in the power play section. And uh, basically what we're going to do here is, or what happens here is the other team, dependent, you know, most of the time they're swinging, I'm just drawing them stationary so that you can kind of get an idea. But most of the time the pass will come out to a man who's swinging through, uh, who picks up the puck and begins to walk up the boards. Okay. Um, in the in general, the uh, the basic uh, premise of the um, of this forecheck, the T forecheck, is that you're gonna you know whichever side the guy decides to come up, you're gonna take the pot or you're gonna take and you're gonna angle him and begin to take away his ice. And then the second guy is gonna do essentially the same thing. He's gonna take an angle a little bit further up ice, where hopefully you're taking away um, the passing lanes across the ice. And generally what ends up happening if you do it properly is this guy ends up angling, taking away all the ice for, uh, for this particular player, and then usually they end up, you know, chipping a puck up off the boards or, or turning it over in the neutral zone where our defenseman can just pick it up and dump it back in and start all over. Um, as always, there is a little tweak that I like to do that actually makes this more aggressive and uh, safer in the same process. So anytime that you can get safer and more aggressive, um, you take it. So what I like to do is I like to start these guys more over to the side, okay? And what I will do is I'll actually pick a side and I'll force the defenseman to come out the side that I want him to. Okay, so here's how I do that. Um, basically, let's say that I'm gonna take away some of, these, uh, some of these lines here. But basically, let's say the defenseman's come in and he's stopped. I'm gonna, as I'm coming in as a four checker, I'm just gonna slow right down, slow right down. And I'm gonna look and see what hand this guy shoots. So usually I'll try to make him come out his backhand side, uh, just because it's a little bit more of an awkward pass um, to come out your backhand side. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter. Um, but if you notice, for example, that the other team likes to break out one side more than the other, then you're gonna take away the side that they like to break out. So let's say if they like to always break out on this side and you've noticed that, um, and that's something you should pay attention to the very first power play. You know, do they always come out the same side? And if so, then you're gonna take that side away. So you're just gonna come in and uh, you're going really slow. It's, it's a timing thing. You don't, wanna, you don't wanna come in and end up too low. So you just go really slow, really slow, and uh, you wait there all day if you need to, right? Um, because you know, at the end of the day, you're not gonna let him walk out the side that he wants to walk out on. So you're gonna hang out, hang out, hang out, hang out, hang out, and eventually that guy will get sick of waiting for you. I mean, the time's ticking. He wants to make something happen on his power play. So he will begin to walk out the other side. Uh, because you forced it, so that's fine. So as soon as he starts walking out, then that's when you start picking up your speed a little bit, okay? So you're watching, 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 and as he's about here, you're about there, okay? So as he starts round in that net, you're, you're going far enough behind him that it's not gonna make sense for him to turn back around and still come back out the other way. And you're far enough behind him that if he does decide to try that, to turn around and come back out the other way, you've got enough space that you can still adjust and still seal off that side that you don't want him coming up. So you're really taking the uh, the issue into your own hands here and you're forcing him to come out the certain side, okay? As he comes out, now uh, you're close enough that you're gonna put some pressure and his only option is gonna be to pass to this guy, okay? Now as soon as that pass is in the process of being made, you can tell when a player is gonna pass. As soon as that pass is in the process of being made, that's when you explode, okay? So that's when you really pick up, turn on the jets, and explode over, and now you're taking an angle um, where you're, in fact, I probably could have drawn this even a little bit better. So let me do that. Um, you're gonna come nice and low, timing it out, timing it out, and then, uh, and then you gotta remember, this player is probably receiving the puck in motion, okay, and that's gonna affect our angle as well. So he's probably receiving the puck in motion. As soon as he gets the puck, that's when you explode, or as soon as the pass is about to be made, that's when you explode, and you take an angle, 
that is almost like directly behind him. Okay, so you're catching up to him from behind, and uh, you should have the speed going. I mean, he has to turn, pivot, pick up a pass. You should have all you're doing is going straight forward. You should have more speed than he does, um, and you should be able to close that gap, control it, and um, take an angle on him that's uh, going to eliminate a pass back. Remember, that was one of the things that we like to do to combat a, a neutral zone trap or a or a, you know our penalty kill forecheck. Um, we like to drop the pass back to that defenseman. You're going to take an angle, and you're going to have enough speed that it's going to be so fast that he, so fast and a proper angle that he's not going to have that potential for a back pass, um, and that's great. That's exactly what we're looking to do. Now this forward is doing almost the exact same thing except uh, further up the ice. So he's going to come in, and basically he's kind of watching, 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 and as he sees the play progressing, he's doing the exact same thing except he's basically taking away the middle option. And uh, if he plays that properly, I had uh, one of my buddies that we, you know, we played together for a lot of years, and uh, usually I was the first guy. Um, I had that you know, speed and angling thing kind of nailed down, and he was a phenomenal interceptor of passes. And so usually I would end up setting that guy up, and he'd read the play properly, and uh, basically he'd, I don't know how he would do it, but he'd kind of stay invisible until this guy was about ready to make his pass. And then all of a sudden he was there in the passing lane, and uh, this guy would intercept a lot of passes there and uh, you know we, we were we were in tune enough with each other that as soon as I saw that he was about to intercept it then I'd peel off and get to the net he'd turn around and uh, you know we'd, we'd have a two on0 or a two on one uh, on our own penalty kill so it's a very good play very very good forecheck and can be it's very aggressive but at the same time it's safe because you're angling properly you're taking away passing lanes. Uh, and it works really well. So worst, best case scenario, this guy intercepts it and you walk in 2 on 0 Worst case scenario, uh, this guy runs out of space. There's no pass across. He can't pass back. So, uh, you know, he tries to do some sort of chip up to, uh, you know, maybe up to this guy. Or, uh, you know, somehow, usually this guy's swinging through anyways. Usually this guy's trying to swing through somehow. Um, so usually there's not much that he can do other than chip it forward. And that's where our defensemen just slide over, intercept it, dump it back in, and you start over. So that's my little twist on the uh, on the T4 check. Works really, really well. A, because you're forcing the player to come up the side that he's less comfortable on. B, because you're fast enough and angle well enough to take away all passing options. And C, because uh, it can create a lot of turnovers and odd man rushes on your own penalty kill. So have fun with that one.